Welcome back, drawing class. I hope everyone had a great spring break. Last week, we looked at uh, setting up a still life with controlled lighting, either by blocking out ambient light or having a strong kind of direct light source. Then we had set in our linear construction and kind of proportional placement on our drawing page. Uh, so, you know, you'll have different objects, but you should have kind of a linear construction of you know, two to three objects of your still life on your page. Um, the next step, once we move away from line and into shape, we want to start thinking about values. So if we think back to what we covered in class, as far as drawing goes, the only things you need to really be thinking about are the shapes you're putting down, the values, and then the edge quality. Okay, so we've got the proportional shapes down. Um, especially the large contours. And we start to look a little bit at the separation of light and dark. And that's where the shapes turn into values. That's where these two kind of merge. So the next part, we want to look at our values. Um, we're using, you know, graphite on paper. So whenever we're using a new medium on a new kind of uh, substrate, we need to practice, uh, do a quick kind of value scale, because uh, everyone will act a little bit differently. Even between the hard and soft pencils, you'll get a different um, value range. So we've, in class, we've got a hard and a soft pencil. Here, I've got a hard and soft pencil. If you just have one pencil at home, then you'll want to complete this little value strip uh, all with that one pencil. If you do have a few different softnesses and hardnesses, then it would be good to start with your hard pencil for your lights. You know, if we numbered these, one through five, lightest to darkest. And then as we get down here into your darker colors, you could switch to your softer pencil and get a little bit darker with um, less pressure. Okay, so I like to do that and set up just a little value scale on whatever paper I'm using. If I'm using a new paper and new uh, medium to work with, which you guys will be since we're outside the classroom and you got new mediums uh, and pencils at home. So we're gonna do a little value scale uh, to get form. We need five values to kind of get a nice volume or effective volume. Uh, so that's what we're gonna set up here. I just have a nice even, I use this ruler and just trace the outsides of it. And then every inch I just marked um, a little dash and I made a little box. Uh, doesn't have to be perfect. It's just really uh, practice for setting up. So when we move into uh, rent toning and rendering this final drawing, uh, we know our ranges. And then when I refer to, when we fill in our, our shapes or shadow shapes with a value, and I say fill it in with a value four, you know what to go to. That's really the point. So remember the lightness, the lightest value we've got, value one, is the lightness of the paper. And it's probably not even, like look at the difference there between white and the kind of white of the paper, unless you're using printer paper at home. Um, we still actually have a little bit brighter. So we're gonna, this is the lightest we can go with what we're working on. So we're gonna keep that blank. Uh, the darkest we can go, I've got a soft pencil. This is a little bit, you can just, it's a darker. It's softer than this one. So I would go down here. If you have just one pencil, you're just gonna press as hard as you can down here and you're gonna fill this in. That's gonna give you your lightest, your darkest. It's kinda of gonna key it and show you how dark we can actually get. Now remember, it is a sharp point. Um, but I'm, I kind of flatten this down so I can use the whole width of that piece of lead. So this can fill in pretty quickly. And these don't have to be neat by any means. Um, it's just practice, it's a tool for you to train and kind of key your drawing. So press fairly hard here. And then I lean a little bit up onto the point of the pencil to get a little bit more pressure. And that's about as dark as I can go with this pencil. Not as dark as we're gonna be putting in initially on our drawing, but when I go to put in my deep darks, that's how far I can go. Um, so now we know the range, right? We still haven't touched these three, but we know that's the lightest, that's the darkest. Um, and then, you know, you think you'd be moving this way, kind of just softening the touch as you work towards here, which uh, with practice, you definitely can do. But for a more kind of systematic approach uh, where it'll be more accurate, I like to kind of jump. I like to, okay, I know that it's without touching the page at all. That's how light I can go with pressing as hard as I can. That's how dark I can go. I like to start in the middle here. That's why I've got five. That's why it's not a six value scale or a four value scale. It's a five because it gives me this middle 
square. If I were to bump up and add more values, I'd go seven and then nine, uh, just so I have this middle value so I can aim between these two. So it's not only honing your ability to uh, like adjust the pressure of your pencil on the page and get an accurate value square in here, it's also honing your eye to kind of be able to judge where, when I put this value down, what is that value? And all I'm looking for, I'm not really trying to assign a number, even though this is a three out of my five value scale, I'm just trying to go in between lightest and darkest. And as soon as I get to where I think, you know, if it goes lighter, is it gonna be closer to that uh, too light? If it goes darker, is it gonna get too close to that too dark? I wanna go right in the middle. That's the real benefit of having that odd number value scale. So we can get that judge. So I think this being the hardest I can press, this being nothing, this feels like right in the middle to me. And I think it's a good start. I, once I get these two in there, this will actually read more accurately too. Um, so I can always come back and edit it. Now I switched without even like thinking about it, just inherently, I switched to the lighter pencil. Um, this is a 4B and this is an 8B. So that way I just had a slighter touch to it when I was putting it down. Um, and then for sure, I'd be switching to the uh, 4B or the harder pencil as I move up here to a lighter value. So now I do the exact same thing. See how I cut the five into three? Now I'm gonna focus on these three, these top three values. Now what goes in between nothing and this mid, what, I've, what my medium is giving me as my mid value? What's in between that? And see, it's a lot easier than trying to guesstimate, okay, 80% pressure, 50% pressure, like 25% pressure. I guess this would be 75% pressure. Um, it's less about that and having to guess, and it's more about like, okay, what feels about halfway? The human brain and eye is a lot better at judging half than it is fractional. Kind of jumps. Uh, if we were going to really take our time and, and kind of really get to know this medium, um, we would take we'd be really slowing down here and actually like evening all these out uh, and making them real clean and trying to keep them really flat. Uh, for the sake of this exercise, I just want you to get comfortable with your tools you've got at home. So we're not going to make these beautiful. More, I want to instill the idea of doing this with any new medium. And see, I feel I pressed. I was trying to like mitigate that jump, but I think I got a little bit too dark. Comparatively, it's, it seems like it's closer to this value than it is nothing. So I'm just going to go in and pull off a little bit of the tone. And you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do just want to kind of keep it fairly flat. So it's going to really test your ability to kind of, as I, you hit the places with graphite already on it you kind of ease up and as you hit the valleys where there's nothing you're kind of pushing further or harder it's just going to really train your kind of hand-eye coordination along with your eye i guess hand-eye coordination the eye is all right and then you know do the same thing so we got that so that looks like a nice bracket bing 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 this looks like a nice bracket. Now we have to focus on what's halfway between this guy and this guy. Um, I'm going to switch back to my softer, darker pencil just because I think that'll be quicker and easier to get that tone down. So I'm pr pressing fairly hard, but not anywhere close to how hard I pressed for that guy. And then once you got that laid in, you might have to go back in and kind of adjust what you might have thought you had correct in the first place. Value, like color, is so relative. It really matters what's around it, what's next to it. So now that I've got that, and I know I can't go any darker here. That seems nice, but I think this might have gotten a little bit, maybe now that I'm looking at this all in one, it's a little bit closer to the dark side. So pulling it up a little bit. And I'm not, I'm not 
scrubbing really hard. I'm actually, I flattened it out so that it's got a wide kind of surface area and I'm really lightly going back and forth. As soon as I put too much pressure, it'll just go create a big gash in there. Okay, so for a rough, quick value scale, just testing out the medium on the paper, I think that's good. And that's what you should do anytime you switch uh, materials. So we know what our lightest is, the tone of the paper. We know how dark our darkest pencil can go. And then we've practiced a little bit of our pen pressure sensitivity and kind of our value judgment through our eye. So that will cover your, like, your five value system for this next step where we go in and we fill in. We identify our shadow shapes and we fill them in. We're going to be filling them in with probably something around a four, maybe even like a three and a half. So somewhere in here. So when I say I go in and identify what's your light shapes, you're going to leave it the tone of the paper. And what are your shadow shapes? You're going to fill it in maybe with like a 3.5. Uh, the idea, you know, that's just a, no, a value number. The idea is that we don't want, we want to reserve these deep darks for like our occlusion shadows and maybe these for our core shadows. Uh, we want to separate the light and dark. So we're going to go a little bit darker than middle value so we can tell the difference between our shadow shapes and our light shapes on our drawing uh, but we still want to give ourselves a little bit of room to add some variation with inside those shadow shapes so when i say separate the light and shadow fill it out with a flat tone i'm going to be referring to like a 3.5 3.5 to a 4 okay so that will cover the value the next thing that we're moving on to once we've done that will be our edge kind of variation and remember that all has to do with once you've designated what your shapes, your light and your shadow shapes, and that's for referencing value, your light and your shadow shapes, how do those light and shadow shapes meet? What's the edge quality there, okay? And then there's only two kinds. There's your form shadows and your cast shadows. So if you have a form, cylinder just like my brush holder in my setup is a cylinder um, the, the lights coming from the opposite direction in my setup but the same thing's happening we're getting the light hitting sorry light hitting and then rolling over the form giving us this light and shadow separation so we have this nice soft edge okay so that's that's the first kind of shadow type it's a form shadow and it gives us a soft edge so we've determined the shape the light shape the dark shape the light value, the dark value, check, check, and then the edge, how they meet, soft, okay, easy. The other kind of shadow shape is cast shadow. So it's not referencing the form itself, but it's the shadow type that the object is casting. And very generally, uh, your form shadows are soft when it comes to your edges, and your cast shadows are sharp. So you can see the difference how sharp this is when it leaves, and you do also tell how it kind of uh, more ambient light is flooding into these shadow shapes, so it does diffuse and soften as this. Sh so now you have this light shape and you have this shadow shape. Um, that's what this shape is, that's what this shape is. Light, dark value, and the edge, sharp to soft as it moves away. So, to, um, just to reiterate that, form shadows are generally going to be softer, again, relative. Not always super soft, technically, this shape on here, on the form, we have a light shape and a shadow shape. This is a fairly sharp edge. Maybe not as sharp as like your cast shadow, but definitely sharper than this soft rolling form right here. So you can't always say they're soft, but in general, they're softer. This is where it gets into, you know, this, the more planar, where it, instead of it being a rolling form, it's going to be a planar form change plane change, so it gets a little bit sharper. But in general, softer. Cast shadows will be sharper. And then moving to soft as they diffuse. And then these move to sharp as they get more planar. And that's the difference between, you know, um, cylinders and cubes, right? So it's just the more it reticulates, the sharper it gets and the sharper that edge gets, but it's still a form. Okay, and then they have their sharp cast shadows. So we're gonna apply 
all of that. We're gonna, I would love you guys to take, now that we've done the linear construction of our shapes, our objects, we're gonna look at our value. So we have to create a value scale, five step. We're only gonna be using um, two to start off with, but we need to know where, it's, where that second one, light of the paper and that 3.5 to four sits within your value scale. And we're gonna pull those out and we're gonna identify our light shapes and our shadow shapes. We're gonna evenly tone them by even, just keep them nice and flat, try and like uh, limit the variation within it. Then we're gonna look at how they meet, the edge quality, okay? Um, and it can, there can be a lot of, you know, it's all about light and shadow meeting, um, unmeeting, meeting, blending together. And so it can be very overwhelming. But when we just think about it, like we've already identified our shapes. Now we identify our value. The last step will be that edge. And you use these two shadow types to help um, make it easier to see as the artist, as you're translating the visual uh, from your eye to your mind, back to your hand onto the page. And then we can emphasize it um, and push that quality, push the form softer to give them more form, push the cast sharper to help show the contact to the page or how it's rolling over something else. For instance, this is a form shadow, but as soon as you put another form in front of that, it creates a cast shadow and see how sharp that cast shadow is right there. So this cast shadow helps explain that form too, right? It's a cast shadow on a form. So it gives it nice and sharp. So we push the edge quality, the sharpness and the softness to help explain both what we're trying to say to the viewer. Um, and, that, and that's the trick. Those, these three things, that's all it takes. Proportional shape, which we got in the last step, clean separation, identification of our values, light and shadow, and then just how they meet. Um, we don't want to get caught up in all the subtle half tones. We'll definitely add that in the final step. But really, it's about the clean separation, simplification of them and then how they meet and emphasizing that, pushing the character of each one, the two different shadow types. And remember, it's all relative. Softer, sharper, lighter, darker, it's just a starting place, very forgiving medium, graphite and uh, eraser. Pen, not so much, charcoal, maybe a little bit less, but still very forgiving. So we're gonna take our drawing and the next step Now that we have all the line work done is tone and it's just a flat tone okay so you look at your setup and um and we're going to identify where the light source is coming from you can i find it even helpful to place it on my page just so i know um, and that way i know everything on the right side is going to be receiving light everything on the left is going to be falling into shadow unless there's a highly reflective object kicking it back um, and then when it comes to, I know this is just drawing, but looking forward year down the line, when we get to painting, this is also going to be critical for identifying color and temperature of light. So often when I, if I'm painting, I'll just put a little tick mark of, okay, where's my light source? What's color temperature is it? Because everything then say it's a, this is a very neutral light I've been using just because we're focusing on black and white. But if you get the warmth of the sunlight, you get really warm lights and you get really cool shadows. So it's it's a good idea to indicate your light source actually on your page. Towards the end, you can just erase it or lose it into the tone of the background. Um, and we're just going to go in and tone these. I need to get back to where I can actually be observing my still life. But what we'll be doing is I like to probably just start with a little bit harder pencil and then just tone these that value three and a half to four, nice and flat. Against same thing, this is where warming up with one of those value, um, the value scales will really help you to practice. Like now that I've practiced making flat squares, I can kind of use that same pencil pressure um, that I've worked on in muscle memory to get, make these nice even shapes. Don't be scared that you're going to be losing. I'm just guessing this is where the shadow shape is. I really need to step back and look at my setup. Um, but I'm going to be guessing that like that's going to be my form shadow and then my cast shadow will be merging down here. Don't be afraid to lose a lot of this information. Trust in your the ability that you found this drawing that we're going to be able to go back and find all that those contour lines again too, right? Like in areas like this where we know this is the cast shadow of that, so it's going to be dark. And you know this is the form shadow. We're going to probably lose that edge. That's okay. We'll get more into that. But this is what I mean. Just a flat shape. You could even use your finger. Be careful if you have 
any oil in there or you know just a paper towel or even a piece of paper torn off and folded into a triangle too if you really want to make this flat like that that works too but we're not going super dark the key there is 3.5 on a five value scale okay so that reserves and later on when we get to pushing our edge type and shadow shapes it reserves this darker value for a core values and occlusion shadows where we can find some of those edges again okay we're gonna go more into that okay now i got the lighting set up correct on my still life again i can take a closer look now and more accurately fill in those shadow shapes i was talking about we're looking for that separation of light and dark and just separating those two um, and only using, right, to start off with two values. We've already spent the time to find the shapes, the contours, um, and then the light shape and shadow shapes. Now we just need to switch to value. So the value is going to be light and shadow. And remember, we're going for light of the paper and three and a half to value four. Not as dark as we can go. We want to save room for that darkness so just these two right now and we call that noton which is just two value statement okay it's the simplest form and it's really it's what you want to look for when composing um we're using it as a tool to a procedural tool to set up the drawing and to check our proportions um, and then we'll we'll push past that but you want to, when you're first like transcribing what you're seeing in front of you, but also when you're composing and moving stuff around in your setup, you wanna be thinking about that simplest two value statement, because that's where the power comes from. If you can hold on to that strong light and shadow, light and shadow, light and shadow shapes, and compose thinking that way, thinking about how you know it flips from one to the other and how maybe this shadow shape supports you know this structure over here, remember thinking back to when i was composing knowing like yes this is very heavy on the right side but i was thinking about how this shadow shape would also be coming up here and support that so thinking about that overall composition if you can hold on to that two value statement that contrast there um, and use it powerfully in your compositions then your work will have an impact from a distance you know across the gallery across the room it'll draw people in and then when we expand upon that and add those other two value steps in here in that deep dark that's when you get all the subtlety of the detail. That's what holds a person looking at your piece. So we start here with the simplest light and shadow. And I'm just going to go through and fill those in as flat, which means even as possible, going for this nice even tone throughout. Um, only then we can start to go back and look at that edge quality and then the gradations of using some of those half tones and then pushing those deep darks. Okay. got the shadow shapes toned in with a flat dark value not super dark the darkest dark but a dark value to separate it from the light but what I haven't done is taken into account the local tone or local value of the objects themselves that's because it's almost more important in this setup especially because it's such a strong light source that the light and shadow play a bigger part so we have a light and shadow on a tan cup light and shadow on a gray school light and shadow on an orange and black book and the white pages of that book um, and the more important relationship there is that the the light and shadow so even though this is a white page the fact that it's a white page in shadow means that it's darker than the black book in light okay so the local tone is important it's going to be important to describe this as accurately as it is in the setup but the light and shadow relationship is more important so white in shadow is darker than black and light. This is the black book in light. So now that I've got the light and shadow separated, now I can take a look at those local tones. So the local tone of that book is black. I'll have to add a value in there. And I might lose, you can see how right now the, sh the cast shadow from that skull is super strong because it's technically placed on a very light, almost white value book. 
So I'm gonna add that local tone in there of the black and this is gonna become uh, more subtle. You won't see this as much just to make it read correctly. But the most important thing is you'll notice that this is gonna stay almost as the white in shadow, almost as dark as the black in light. Kind of crazy, right? Okay, so you can see I've started to work a little bit smaller in here. Um, the same concepts still apply though. It's just a little bit more complex in situations like this compared to the brush holder, which is just that simple cylinder we constructed. This has got the overall sphere shape, but then it's got like the nasal bone and the muzzle of the mouth and stuff like that you have, that you have to take into consideration as far as light, shadow, it just gets smaller. But I'm still thinking and trying to keep it fairly in like a middle value range. Um, it's going just a little bit darker because I'm trying to get small and it's hard to erase. You can see a couple times I was using this pen eraser just because you're able to put a little bit more pressure, especially in these small areas, to pull up some of that um, graphite that might have got worked into the paper. But for the most part, the kneaded eraser will be just fine. Uh, the next stage, once you have it nice and flat, value toned in your shadow shapes, um, and you can go to a much higher level of detail, you know, getting really accurate with the shadow shapes, going from the really kind of simple straight to maybe looking at how this, as it comes down the cylinder, actually starts to bend in a little bit here because the taper of that container kind of wraps under. Uh, so you can kind of take this to the oomph degree as far as detail goes. I've kept it pretty simple, just going into a little bit of detail here and here. Um, the next stage is to look at your shadow types. So we've just done light and shadow. Now, thinking back to the what we just discussed before tackling the drawing, when we were just going over concepts of shadow types was form and cast, and soft for the forms, sharp for the casts. So we can start applying those things. We can be looking at the form of this cylinder and the form shadow on it. The cast shadow of that form down here, which actually the the skull block, so we're not going to see a ton of it. But then we can see the form and how it's soft here, and then a little bit sharper for the cast of that form. Um, softer form here on the edge of that book, sharper here, where the book is making contact with the table. So that's that next step. And we'll start to push that a little bit further uh, in the next video.